Hello and welcome back to the next episode of the UFX C Sharp Uncut Let's Play series. I apologise if this episode is late today. Um, I'm a little bit late in recording because I've been working on the next series uh, and the entire roleplay aspect, the constitution, um, how you guys will be involved in the RP and all that stuff. If you're interested in that, head over onto the Discord. Feel free to message me about it and we can kind of talk over it if you have any ideas. Here's a quick glimpse at... Um, the constitution so far. Uh, I'm not going to go over it in this video because that's not really the place. But let's just say that if you are interested in helping out or in being part of that when the series does come about, feel free to head over to the Discord in the description below. So, where are we? The year is 2241, 101 years after the uh, start of the series, start of the Federalist Republic. Um, and we are, well, <laughs> we have expanded significantly. As you can see here, um, we have many, many systems explored, 70 total, and we've surveyed 43 of them. We control the systems from Greenbridge to FL Virginus, um, and we are continuing to explore out towards the galaxy here. We have hubs like 55 Buddhists providing fuel resupplies to our colonies. We have mining areas like Sirius and uh, Alpha Centauri and war zones that we have conquered in Groombridge and Theta for Nasius. Um, and yeah, we're doing really, really, really well. I'm not too sure where else to take the series from this point. Um, so what I'm going to do now, it really is just we're going to continue to build up our fleet, continue to... Uh, secure the galaxy, so to speak, and then um, we will we will try and uh, find some aliens to, to kill, uh, I think, at the end of the day. I mean, our logistic situation is pretty goddamn good, um, and we're just kind of waiting um, at this point for a challenger to approach. Because once a non-player race does spawn, and they will spawn at some point or another, once they do spawn, it will be a completely different level of challenge compared to the one that we have faced in the precursors and the rackers that we have soundly defeated, um, even though they did give us plenty of uh, trouble uh, to begin with, um, is definitely something we want to caution about. So something uh, that we did actually finally, finally develop, of course, would be the new Tokamak fusion drives, I do believe. Yeah, or not, yeah, internal confinement fusion reactor drives, or drives in general. This now means that we can begin to actually design ourselves um, some, you know, actually design some of our next generation of warships. So the Normandy Block 2 is, uh, we're going to make a supercarrier. The first vessel that will contain the new technology will be on a supercarrier. Um, so we want to do a 1.25 boost. There we go. Prototype that design. Take away the old uh, future project drives and then add in our own engines accordingly. Uh, we want to be using the prototyped internal fusion drives. And we will need four of those. We have plenty of space still remaining here, and I'm kind of wondering what to do with it. I'm thinking magazine capacity is probably going to be best in this situation. Um, I don't really want to add more guns. Range is fine. Um, yeah, there's not really anything else that I particularly would want to add. We could add more hangar space. We could go, go to 50,000 hangar space, which will give us a total of 100 uh, crafts that we could potentially put on. I mean, if we think about that, right, we have uh, that that would give us another ten. Um, so we could increase the number of interceptors to probably thirty six at that point. Um, but of course, that might also then cause issues for us um, in regards to the fact that um. We wouldn't have enough magazine space for what I would really want. And so that is something that I'm actually going to just focus on is going to be the magazine space. So I'm going to design a new magazine that's going to be probably about 5,000 tons. Um, so a HS100 uh, HS magazine, which gives us another, basically increases our capacity by 50%, which of course will help just in general. 
Um, so I'm going to design that magazine. We're going to then slap it on. That gives us 5,400 magazine space. Now we did design the new strike fighter as well, um, which we're going to rename to the block four. Um, and the block four class strike fighter, Ardvark. Um, but that's using size six missile launchers. So if we use our calculator skills, my big brain calculator skills over here, to estimate how many missiles we would actually be able to use. So 5,400, divide that by six. We have 900 total missiles. We have 48 fighters, which means we fire about 200 missiles around, which would give us, if we divide that by 192, that gives us 4.6 salvos, or about 5.6 if you include the ones already within the tubes. Um, yeah, that, that, that gives us plenty of, uh, of missiles. Um, make sure I'm being correct on the math there. Uh, no, 48, yeah, 48 times 4, that's 192, yeah, I am. Okay, so that means that we'll be able to fire way, way more missiles than we would be. We'll be able to fire five salvos there um, on its own. Which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, the rest I'm going to add in is maintenance. Um, yeah, the ma maintenance uh, improvements, uh, realistically speaking. Um, the, yeah, after a year, I use set 5,000 total engineering space, uh, 5,000 maintenance supplies. So, yeah, we'll have to just uh, handle that in, in other regards. But we pretty much designed this vessel. So there we go, 100,000 ton supercarrier. And I'm going to name this after, um, I'm going to name this after, I think, uh, what, what, what should we name the super, the new generation of supercarriers? God, that cost is well, 13,000 build points. I think after, uh, after maybe planets, systems, Sol, um, that's kind of what we did with Normandy, but I'm going to, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to name this the, we already have the Rhine's class, we have the Normandy, uh, we're going to return to the same kind of theming and naming, um, and I'm going to rename this to the, what, what kind of systems do we have? Brontide, since that was the system that we can go, we're going to the Brontide class supercarrier. There we go. Uh, now, before we design that, we need to actually sort out some of our fighters. So if you look at our interceptors, in Interior B class, these are already out of date now. Um, we need to replace these. Uh, the new carriers will not be using the old Ontario uh, interceptors. So we're going to design a new one with a new engine. Um, we have a tilt tracking capability. If you look at being fire control, we can do... Uh, we can do a max tracking speed of 20,000 kilometers per second, but I would like to add on um, just a better engine overall. So we're going to do a 300% engine. What is the uh, size of the engine that is on here? Uh, that is 210 tons. So I think that's 4.2, something like that. So that's what we're going to add in. Uh, engines, 300%. Then 4.1, yeah, 4.2 was the correct answer. So that will increase the speed by 5,000 kilometers per second, which uh, is pretty damn good, if you ask me. We're only going as fast as missiles with some of these, uh, with some of these engines. Uh, with, yeah, well, there we go. Um, so that gives us 2,532 kilometers uh, per second. That does increase the cost uh, significantly. Uh, well, not significantly, but it does increase the cost by about 10%. Uh, but the speeds that we're able to generate um, are definitely worth worth the effort um, in this in this case. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the interior C class. But we'll get to design that once I've actually got the one side out and functional. So research prototype. We just need to get the magazines and then also the shipyard as well as the engines, and it's actually pretty much done. Um, so I, I want magazines, which is going to be under here. I'm going to take away the laboratories over on a biphase carbide armor, and I'm going to assign those to the magazine research. 
because we need to have two different kinds of magazines. Uh, then I'm going to take away the research on the uh, more efficient engines. I'm going to focus that on getting ourselves the better, the better drives. The rest of these laboratories are going to be going into, I think, ground combat stuff. Specifically, I want to get our efficiency in terms of building ground combat things quickly up. Uh, but yeah, let's just increment through. And then once that's done, we'll be able to actually do some... Do, well, we'll be able to field a new carrier. I won't put the um, Normandies out of service, so to speak. But I will kind of sideline them, right? So they'll be more like escorts or, or they'll be sent to not as important fields. While the new Bronte-class supercarrier will be the primary um, carrier used. Uh, gravitational survey completed in Theta Fornasius. Uh, which is fantastic news. Um, I'm going to have uh, the Paula Diaz then um, go to 57 Budas, go to an unexplored jump point, and begin to jump through it. There we go. That'll take him about a month or so to go through. Um, finding loads of stuff on Groombridge still, as it's still a ruined colony, and there's still things that we can obviously find there uh, that we need to be, uh, need to be aware of. Um, we discover a system of Delta Eridani, nothing in it of any value to me. Um, the Nito has completed her overhaul. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the Nito is, but it is completed so overhaul. I think that's carrier of some kind. Um, but yeah, we're just continuing to survey and uh, we're looking, we are looking for more uh, enemies and and more things to find, or more valuable worlds. Beta Pupus over here seems to have an insane amount of jump points, so we are going to go exploring through them, see if we can find anything of any great value. The uh, Fusion Drive there just finished up research, which is fantastic news. Uh, now I'm going to continue our focus here on getting more efficient engines in that regard. So, um... Yeah, we don't, we don't have much left to, to really do with that. The block 4, we do need to get sorted out, though. Um, yeah, research prototype on box launcher and on the fusion drive. I actually got to remove the fusion drive um, and then add in uh, the drive that I want, uh, so to speak. Uh, what is the specul specs on that, uh, on that drive? Um, yeah, so that is a 180 ton, in, uh, yeah, 180 ton, uh, so 3.9, 3.6, yeah, 180 ton, um, and then it's, what, 300% power boostage? No, it's not 300%, it's 250, isn't it? I remember, yeah, it's 250. Prototype that design, and then we're going to add that into the design accordingly. Uh, there we go, engine has been added. Then we're going to research that prototype engine, uh, and I will have the uh, power propulsion people get to work on it immediately. Uh, so, matching scientists, there we go. And then once you guys are done with the magazines, you can grab uh, the kinetics weapons. Um, we also have to design new missiles, of course. Uh, we have to replace the, sh the strikers. We don't need the strikers anymore because we're going to be going with... Um, the more advanced size 6 missiles. Uh, but we do want to still have... We'll keep the block 3s around. Um, they can still be useful. Um, they're, cheap, they're a cheaper option compared uh, as well. So we can still build them. Um, and they're just as effective, realistically speaking. Um, there's nothing There's nothing wrong with them. So we will keep those around. Unlike the block 2 and block 1, which was replaced relatively quickly. Um, in comparison, we discover a system of Vega. Nice name. Nitrogen, oxygen, atmosphere, 0 0.03. Okay, this world could indeed have alien life. 39 billion max population. Damn. Okay, now this, you got my attention, Vega. Um, it's a pretty small system as well. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to explore this system as best we can here. Um, and I'll be interested to know if there are any aliens located within. It does feel like we've slowed down quite a bit. Is it because I've got things open? No. But it does feel like we have slowed down. So there is a, definitely a chance here. 
Uh, we're surveying that planet first, it seems. Yeah, we are. Uh, no detection yet, though. Uh, we completed research into the ion drive for the block four. Um, that magazine will get done. We need a better mag guy. Uh, I'm going to remove that from the queue. And I'm going to have a separate person look on the box launchers. And then I'm going to have missile and kinetics weapons. We'll have to get another guy on the missiles. So we want a size six missile. Um, that can do a significant amount of damage to our opponents, right? So, uh, let me just uh, open up the calculator really quick. Um, so we want a size six missile, eighty. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, but we have internal confinement technology, um, and what is our current efficiency? Forty-eight. Okay, there we go. Uh, so I'm going to then calculate that. Oh, that goes 48,000 kilometers per second uh, with a power boost of 3. Um, 80 million kilometer range may be a little bit too much here. So what about a 60 million kilometer range? 51,000. Yeah, 60 million kilometers does seem to work out pretty well. Uh, we'll have to update the fire control for it, but I am relatively happy. Um, it's just as fast as, if we have a look, it's just as fast as the Mark III Strikers, but um, it's capable of a 60 million, it's capable of 50% more range and also uh, capable of 110% more damage, 120% more damage, right? Uh, so I, I am, I'm pretty damn comfortable with an engine like this. Uh, so let us go to missile design. I want a 1.5 warhead. Uh, I want a, what's the engine going to be? Let me just move this over to my monitor, second monitor over. Uh, we need an engine, a fuel of 0 0.7. And an engine of 3.8. Uh, so 3.8. With a power boost of 405%. There we go. Now, we could obviously increase the speed to 76,000 kilometers per second, but then the range is 10,000, it's 10 million kilometers. And uh, I, I, I'd prefer a decent range, of course. Um, but yeah, this should do a lot more damage and just be a lot more effective. So we're going to actually rename this to the Mark IV Striker Anti-Ship Missile. Uh, but unlike the Mark III's, uh, this missile is, of course, a uh, size 6 missile. Um, as we need larger missiles to be able to deal with larger targets, of course. Um, and we'll have to redesign the missile fire control as well in regards to that. Uh, no aliens, it seems, in this system, which is definitely unfortunate. I would have liked to meet some. Oh, we are getting some alien uh, detections. Unintelligible communication coming from Vega A2. We are on top of Vega A2. And we've detected no sense of readings, but we are getting communications of some kind. Uh, we have thermal and passive sen uh, uh, signatures. Um, well, let's move away to a safe distance for now. Um, we're going to have the Diego Silves move backwards. Um, I'm not sure of what, what we may be facing or what we may not be facing. Um, where is the system located? The system of Vega. All the way over here. So we'd have to stabilize. Yeah, we'd have to stabilize from EV Lacerte, Captain Star, Signy, Beta Pupus, Vega. And then we can also then colonize all of those systems accordingly. Um, that is definitely interesting. We also go from Bernard Star to Captain Star um, as well if we wanted to. So I'm going to have the Northumberland get onto that. We can continue to expand in that direction as well. I mean, there's nothing stopping us, right? Uh, where's my Northumberland? Northumberland is there. Uh, let's have you stabilize the jump point to that location. Um, and can we get some colony ships over to EV Lacerte, please? Um, I'll need to get some infrastructure moved over. Uh, let me go over to EV Lacerte really, really quick here. Uh, so A2, that is a mountain Venusian world. Hmm, interesting indeed. There, uh, there's, there's no atmosphere, breathable atmosphere there. Uh, so EV Lacerte, we do have a nitrogen auction that ruined the colony atmosphere there. Um, we'll have to get stuff moved over as soon as we can. 
Um, so car group alpha, you have freedom to move things. Um, I'm going to tell you to move over infrastructure to EV Lacerte, unload all installations and head back to earth and then refuel. Um, and then you're going to do this, I think, you know, let's give it four times. This car group, you're going to deliver some needed uh, other stuff. Wow, Ovation is already 116 million people right now. Um, we can need like something for these guys to do. Uh, mining would probably be useful here, which is what I am going to do. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to load... We don't have any normal mines, do we? That's a problem. Uh, let's get building some then. We'll have to uh, we'll have to build some. Uh, otherwise, we won't have any. Uh, so we're gonna build five hundred mines immediately. Um, then uh, I'm going to uh, we we are going to look at some of this other stuff. So you have a refueling station, cargo short station. You're fine. And passives, fine. I, and it does have its main supplies, which should be getting to it, hopefully. Um, Struve 298B2 is largely fine. Guarez is not fine. That is going to need maintenance facilities. It's also going to need... Um, it's also going to need uh, a refueling station and uh, some other stuff. So we're going to move maintenance facilities. We can move, what, uh, 10 at a time? So we're going to be 20 to EQ Pegasi. Um, so EQ Pegasi. Unload all installations, then head back to Sol and refuel. Um, so yeah, we'll do that uh, one more time. Um, and uh, that should be good enough there. And then we'll continue to expand out into the outskirts on the, uh, on the edge of space, essentially. Um, which is where we are going. Box launcher completed, uh, which is great news indeed. Uh, we do need to actually research the striker missile, though. Oh, we already have that on the way. Okay, power propulsion then. Um, let's go for jump radius power mod. Uh, power plant boost is cheap, and we can grab that, and that will actually help some of our designs. The Bruno de Hectus uh, needs new orders. Um, I'm going to send you over to uh, to Vega actually because that is uh, definitely definitely very interesting to me. Um, our ship could be destroyed here, but I would like to know uh, what kind of alien vessel. So um, uh, A4 is likely target for where aliens are from. So we're going to move towards A4, um, and I'm going to see what kind of uh, aliens we're, we're, we're dealing with here. We're not that, we're quite far away from them in reality, so maybe, yeah, I would, this this is making me think that we do have an NPR um, located here. Yeah, that is an EM signature of 612,000. Okay, if we have a look at Earth, what's our electromagnetic signature? Um, I think, what is it? We have population, service to orbit ground units, 876. 210,000 is our electromagnetic signature. <laughs> so that means, that means, ladies and gentlemen, that the signature of this home world is likely three times that. Is, is yes, yeah, three times that of ours. Well, Let's, uh, let's head towards it. So I'm guessing that they were miners or surveyors of some kind um, who were on that other planet and were sending us communications. So we're going to try and get close. I want to see the thermal signature. I'm a billion kilometers away at this point. 800. 700. 600. We received a unintelligible communication. So, what are we dubbing this race as? The Vega Aliens. Oh, that's friendly. <laughs> <laughs> that's very friendly. Uh, assistance populations. Vega. Vega A4. Communicate. Communication attempts already underway. 
Okay, well, we know that the aliens are definitely here, right? Um, yeah. Uh, interesting. Definitely interesting. Uh, we're going to go which, within, like, 200 million. I'm not going to push my luck. I want to just see, like, can we get a thermal readout of, like, the, the ships? Because I want an electromagnetic readout. Because I would like to know how many naval vessels they have. Okay, broadsword class, GPS, 29,000 has been detected. We conquista class. Interesting. So they have sensors to be able to detect us, that's for sure. Um, six broadswords, two reconquistas, war horses. That does not sound very fun. There you go, aliens. I don't know what speed or technology they have, which is uh, interesting. It's a lot of vessels. We're talking about 30, give or take. Uh, thermal. 15 war horses at least. Okay. We're leaving. Um, and we are heading back to, yeah, we're going to head back to EV La Certe. Okay. Um, EV La Certe. Then we're going to head to Greenbridge. Have you refuel, head to EV La Certe again. So I've got a plan here. So in, in the last episode, we built uh, and designed a, a ship. Uh, this ship was the Suffolk. Now the Suffolk is very low thermal signature, very low cross readout, um, and it has elant available to it. Now, the hope is that we can use such a vessel to gain information on the aliens, which is what the plan's going to be. So I'm going to auto route you to EV La Certe. Now, it doesn't have a jump drive, but it does have, um, it can be jumped by another vessel. Okay, well, I'm at, we're out of here. We're getting the hell out of here, because no way. But we have found our first non-player race that was not a spoiler. Um, and this means that we have... Yeah, so this is where the aliens are. Now, Captain Star is going to be of vital importance towards us, um, re realistically speaking, because this is a crossroads into Evil Certe and also into Lumen. Now, Lumen is a crossroads between all of our major systems. Uh, um, presuming the, they are hostile, they may not be hostile, we need to prepare for that eventuality. So, Signy has an archipelago world with nitrogen, methane, and economy cost of two. We can station ground forces and service to orbit weapons located in that system, um, and we can use it as basically a, uh, a forewarning um, of, of knowing if the enemy were to come towards us, what we would be able to potentially do towards them. Um... So we are going to need sensor buoy set up. We're going to need a lot of other things set up. Set up. Um, so speaking of that, where is the Comorant? Comorant. So I remember putting it somewhere around here. There it is. It's got the ammunition it needs. Uh, we're going to head you over to EV La Certe. Head you over to Captain's Star. Uh, move to location, Captain Star. Launch, ready ordinance, then move to location, uh, then... Go through Captain Star, and I'll give you a new order. Um, so yeah, um, it's going to be quite an interesting uh, situation we found ourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and uh, I'm going to officially um, dub. And the question is going to be, uh, do we want to do diplomacy or not? And I'm not too sure on it. If I, if I'll be real, um, I'm going to designate this system as under the control of. The uh, Th Vega aliens. Um, so we'll have to be very, very careful and cautious about what we do. Um, but we have naval fleets in the area, and I am confident that if they do come for us, we will be able to deal with them. Um, and yeah, but we we need to pre prepare ourselves. So today's episode, we're going to prepare ourselves for the eventuality of war. 
Um, and that is why I'm focusing on getting our survey vessels, a scout vessel ready and moved into position. Um, I'm not sure how effective it will generally be due to its low range. Um, yeah, the Elon range is, is not fantastic. Um, the Comoran has completed orders and has arrived. Okay, we're going to give it an extra day just so it can be load. Um, and then I'll have it launch another buoy. Um, where is the Comoran? It's over here. Um, so we're going to have you launch one to EV Lacerte. Then we're going to have you move over to here and you're going to launch one. So if we have a look over in Captain's Star, uh, Captain, uh, Captain, Captain, Captain. There we go. We now have a buoy over the this area. Uh, we do need to get one over uh, Signy, of course, or over yeah, over this area. So launch ready ordnance, please. Um, there we go. There's another one deployed. Um, and then go through there. Um, and I'll give you uh, another another order to launch one. Launch one towards uh, Captain Star. There we go. And then move to location. So that is V51 Signy. Uh, v, 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 V. There we go. Um, so it should not take you that long. Um, you didn't launch one. Uh, it's always temperamental when it can or cannot launch. So we'll give it like a few hours or so. Until it feels that it wants to do the job it's designed to do. And launch ready ordnance. Come on, there we go. We launched it. Fantastic. Then head over to be Beta Pupus, and then uh, we'll have you go and put one there. The Suffolk has arrived, which is fantastic news. So that's our recon frigate. Uh, Gravitational survey of Beta Pupus has completed. Complete research into Mark IV strike array assembles. What a prudent time we will be needing these. Um, I'm going to order an initial shipment of 2,000 of these to be created. Um, yep, 2,000 to be created. Uh, and then we next need to design a missile fire control for our fighter. One with a range. Um, yeah, with a with a range of sixty million kilometers, or there's about some something akin to that. Um, sixty million kilometers that works. We'll create that, and then I will make sure to add that to the Advark Block Four. Uh, we want to get rid of the current missile fire control. Uh, we also want to get rid of the old one as well. Uh, we don't need it, um, and then I'm going to add in our new missile fire control. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, missile fire control. Uh, prototypes. 61. Yeah, 61. There we go. Uh, did I add something by mistake? I think I may have added... Fighter fuel, missile fire. Yeah, but there we go. This also gives us actually um, more, more space to add things too. Um, which is actually really, really useful. Um, I could even add an extra bit, a piece of armor in here if I really wanted to. I could, <laughs> I could armor slightly. Um, I don't think it'd make a difference, but that is something that we we could potentially do. Uh, I'm going to remove these uh, these uh, these weapons. I'm going to add in the normal strikers. Um, may I'm going to add in extra fuel though. I definitely think that that will come in handy and that will allow us to. Um, Move further, go further, and do do more things. Of course, um, hundred thousand. We could add more launchers uh, potentially, which would obviously lower the amount we would be able to fire. But that would that would probably do better for us. If we go for a missile launcher, block six launcher. Uh, not sure that would actually work. Let's remove that fighter fuel. We only want like. Yeah, we only want fuel, fuel. We only want like two billion kilometers worth of fuel. So you know what? Let's add. Let's let's let us let us do it. Let's add the extra piece of armor in. Um, it may it may save some fighters in 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 some point in time. I doubt it, but um, 
you know, if if uh, let's say the AMMs fire, in, you know, that extra hit, that extra little bit of armor may provide protection enough um, to save the lives of brave brave uh, fighter pilots, which is always worth something. Uh, the Mark Frobisher does require new orders now. You're not going into Vega, that's for bloody goddamn sure. Um, we're not going to explore any more systems until we have asserted exactly what kind of a foe we are facing. I wanted an NPR, we got an NPR. Now we need to be very, very careful about how we will be dealing with this NPR. Okay, we've launched another buoy to uh, Beta Pupus here. Uh, I'm going to have the command now um, go through the star. Um, uh, yeah, there you go through the star. And I'm going to wait a couple, uh, like eight hours or so. There we go, and I'm going to have you launch towards uh, V51 Signy, and then move to location, launch that one. Um, so if we go to uh, V51 Signy, and then I go to Beta Pupus, uh, Beta, there we go. Um, that should work out decently, decently well enough anyway. Okay, there is the buoy uh, launched. And then we're going to launch the next one, uh, which we should be able to do. Now, this star system does have habitable planets located on the second star, so potentially we could put forces here. And this is a big crossroads between areas, so strategically it's important. But I'm not. I'm pretty sure the aliens will be able to get to it in 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 a lot quicker time than we will. Okay, so we launch that one. Now we're going to wait before I go and launch another one. Okay, uh, head through to Vega. Launch ready ordnance. Um, yeah, your scout figure, so you do have an active sensor array, which is interesting, and you also have an advanced DM detection array. Uh, once you yeah, get in there, uh, and tell me you're able to get it, and then we're going to get the hell out. Um, there we go, we've launched it. Now we're headed home. Head to Sol and refuel, resupply, load ordnance. Okay, so we have now effectively set up uh, buoys. Um, yeah, we've set up buoys uh, across um, Evil Serta, Captain Star, V Signy, and Beta Pupa. So we'll know if anything comes towards us uh, through that th through those specific jump points. Um, Diego Sills, you're in Bernard Star. Uh, Paula Diaz, you are in here. Beta Pupus, you're in here. Gravitational Survey. Um, Hill Station Ground, Ego, Bernard Star. Um, uh, head to. No, 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 I need to head to Evil Certo, if you could please. I have a special assignment for you before we get you the hell out of there. Neutral ship contacts detected. We conquista. Uh, Vega, uh, is our boy already doing its job? Yes, it is. It just detected uh, four reconquistas. Um, of some kind, anyway. Um, yeah, so these seem to be 7,500 tons, thermal signature of 7. Do we know any kind of speed? Did we get any speed information based on uh, the, that that uh, ship? No, we, we, we got none, um, which is definitely unfortunate, to say the least. Didn't, did we get none? Vega alien, ship classes, we conquista. No speed identification number. I wonder, will they try and destroy the buoy? Uh, they, they, they've not decided to do anything to it. 12,000 kilometers per second. Are you kidding me? The enemy ship can go 12 kilometers per second. 12,000 kilometers per second. That's... That is not a small uh, speed. That is that is fast. That is three times faster than our carry groups. Um, yeah, uh, that is redonkulously fast. 
Uh, what is our hit chance, by the way, versus a 12,000 km per second target? About a 40% chance to hit. Um, which is not great, I will admit. Um, and also, we don't know exactly what kind of weapons they do have, but um, at least we're able to keep track of them now uh, from this point on. Uh, Diego Silva's and Bernard Star. We're just going to stop giving you orders for now. Um, yeah, we're waiting for you to arrive so that you can shuttle over the scout that we can't forget into uh, this system. Uh, no, I do not want to exit. So yeah, now that these uh, these these warriors out, we can detect anything that's coming in, out, or um, or 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 of the like, of course. Uh, Bruno de Hector, why are you going into this system? Uh, head back to head back to Sol. You are not you're not doing anything, my dude. You are going to if you always apply Earth. Okay, we detected new ship classes. These seem to be going slower. Um, so we see the C here indicates civilian or commercial. The M indicates military. Three dagger classes. Okay, so. Partisan, crossbow, or horse, three daggers. Uh, estimate speeds all within around 2,200 kilometers per second. I want to see what they decide to do. We're not hostile with them, so I'm not sure if they would actually destroy the boy. Um, we will see, though. They may do, and if they do, that would, in that would declare their intentions towards us. Um... 71,000 tons, by the way. So maybe some kind of station. Um, some destroyer-sized vessels of some kind. I'm not sure what the discrepancy in their speeds are. That does concern me greatly. Oh, I know what this must... The, the commercial vessel must be some kind of... Um, must be some kind of stabilization uh, vessel. Um, that is likely going to be the case here. Um, so we're going to join the yeah, join that fleet, um, and then we're going to send the Suffolk to Evie Lacerte, uh, not Evie Lacerte, to Beta Pupus, and I'm going to have you uh, move to Vega. That must be what they're doing, they must be trying to stabilise the jump point. After surveying it, that must have been okay. Ah, it all it can't make sense now. The the twelve thousand kilometers per second vessels were not their military. They must have been the jump surveying crafts. That oh, the gravitational survey crafts. And then this is a uh the this is what they're doing to assist in uh what you call it. Yeah, th this is what they're now doing to help jump stabilize the point um and that means that they have intentions to head north uh, so we need to get our stabilization efforts done as quickly as possible and get infrastructure moved as quickly as possible um how many system one two three four one two three yeah uh sol 6.9 10 that's 11 billion kilometers so the bernard star route would actually be pretty goddamn useful i'm not going to lie to you um i'm going to build another north umberland um because we need to actually sell apart our, our game in that regard now when can we start building our new uh our new carrier oops um <laughs> Oopsies. Uh, when can we stop building your carrier? Let's let me have a look. Uh, one tide. We are still waiting on the magazine to finish researching. Okay. Well, the problem right now is that this because I'm sitting on top of the jump point. It's kind of hard for us to really do too much here. Um, come on. What are you? Oh, you're always a pain in my ass. Uh, we supply load ordnance. You'll be fine. Um, now we can start build block 4 fighters, um, so that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to build 48 immediately. Um, yeah, 48 fighters, uh, and I'm going to build shipyard fleet, um, here we go, 48 of them, that'll take us until, uh, next year to build all 48. So that takes us quite a bit of time in regards to things. Uh, inactive research facilities, yep, um... 
Armor is looking real nice right now uh, these days. So that'll take us, you know, a good eight years to uh, to research. But it will obviously be very, very useful. Uh, a common one that's completed others and arrived at Earth, which is fantastic news. And the Suffolk has arrived here. So now we're going to use the, the, scat, the, the survey vessel as kind of a jump tender. And we're going to jump through. Now sensors are off. Um, so my hope is that this will not be as easily detectable. We're going to make for the first planet immediately. Okay, we have arrived and we have left. Okay, they do not seem to give a crap, at least from what I can tell. Um, so we are going to, we're going to move away. Yeah, we're gonna move away at least for a little bit. Um, Elin versus Elin signature, one thousand ten thousand versus normal. Uh, passive signature, ten thousand Elin. Uh, what's the signature at? That that they have a signature of. Uh, what would that be? GPS seven nineteen thousand. So we want the signature versus a hundred. Elon signature versus 107 million kilometers away. So we're going to try and gain some distance. Uh, so we're going to go there. And uh, with that, we're going to try and, you know, get some information uh, from, from them. Um, because the information that we could get could vastly improve our, our chances in any, any kind of warfare that does take place, of course. Um, so. We are going to, we're going to stay there. Um, and I am going to check. So the, 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 the intelligence points should start to build up um, on the ship classes. Um, or at least we should start to determine uh, what kind of vessels they are. So what are the ones that we have found? We have found Warhorse, Dagger, and Crossbow. So... Um, hopefully we shall be able to gain some information in regards to that. Uh, so let's just make sure that our ship's safe for now. Um, it's silent running, so its thermal signature should be practically nothing. Um, yeah, thermal of six. It's outputting a thermal of six, and it's got no active sensors. So it's silent running, like really silent running. Um, do a day increment. The day increment. Okay, I changed new ship contact unintelligible, so they can find it. Uh, we resulted in significant progress, apparently, which is something. Um, more vessels have arrived. Okay, we need to um, we need to vacate this area and hope that they forget that this the Suffolk even exists. So A4 is their planet. So we have a total signature of 10,185 million kilometers away. So we're going to move towards A4. And then once we get within range, we're going to try and gain some information from that. We can't remain here. It's too dangerous. Um, so I'm going to be leaving. Uh, okay, we, see, we can see the recon keys that are moving. It's where they have different speeds. Um, hmm. They seem to be tailing the Suffolk, which is not useful. Um, waypoints, try and lose them. The problem is they do have some kind of thermal, uh, some kind of signature of our vessel, which causes us a problem, of course. Um, so we're going to try and get away. It's so fast. They can go twelve thousand kilometers per second, which is insanity when you think about it. Um, okay, we're going further enough away now that I feel more safe with the Suffolk. Keep in mind, if they fire missiles, we wouldn't really know it until they hit us. Um, so we have to keep that in mind. So it seems like they slowed to 2,222 kilometers per second to escort. 
the commercial vessel, and, and then their actual speed is, uh, you know, eight times that, was, or, you know, five times that speed. Okay, so the vessel has arrived. Uh, we're going to head towards A4. Uh, we'll um, also move up on display for events. Uh, what kind, anything that we should know. Um, suffered maintenance clock on my new plasma on Port Diaz. Uh, Arva block 4, finished production. So yeah, we are making some progress with communicating with these aliens, but uh, the question is, do we really want to? Right now, I think we do, just because they seem to be... Um, how do I say this? Technologically, uh, technologically superior as well as economically superior. But we will find out more information soon enough. Uh, we're going to close within distance. And now the Suffolk has much more advanced sensors. Um, passive ones anyway. Uh, so we should be able to gather much more information than we would otherwise. Uh, so there we go. We're able to detect um, the Vega A there. Um, or their population on the planet. They all signature 175,000. So what can kind of population are we estimating? So they have three times our population and three times our industrial capacity of, in terms of home world anyway. Um, of course, if we added together our EM signatures from all our planets, we'd probably be equal. But this is terrifying, the fact that they are this powerful with one planet. Um, so we're going to try and get closer here. Um, and we're going to try and stick our vessel in, in essentially an orbit around to gain information. Uh, full communication established. Diplomatic rating 16, the Kingdom of Boughton. The race identifies itself as the Kingdom of Bowson. Unintelligible communication. But it seems like they can detect us somehow, which is really, really infuriating that they can detect us. Um, I will admit. New ship has been detected. Trying to get closer, and I'm hoping they want to... Start. Okay, hold. Off. Okay, new class is detected. Hmm, that seems to be a bit of a problem. Um, let's move back. I mean, maybe the E-Link will work without being within technically specified range. Yeah, they're tailing us now. At least they were trying to anyway. As long as we can detect them, and they can't detect us, then that's all that matters. So I'm just going to sit here. So how far away are we now? We're a good 200 million kilometers away. I'm going to back up to about 500 million, probably. Yeah, now we're starting to actually gain intelligence points. That's actually fantastic. Oh my god, why are they sending that towards us? Um, they must have really powerful planetary sensors. It's um, 100 million kilometers away or so. I would like to get further information on them. So as you can see, we're starting to build up. Um, we are starting to build up on their populations anyway, intelligence points. So that will give us further information about their capabilities. Um, that's a lost signature, so it seems to have moved away. So my question now is, is can they send communications to that? Um, no, they can't. Okay, so it means that they can't detect that the Suffolk is there. And it means that we're building up intelligence on the enemy. Well, not the enemy, but on the race, which is also very valuable to us. Um, so I'm going to go for a day. 
Okay, what is the distance between us and the planet? 600 million kilometers. So as long as we keep a 600 million kilometer distance, we should be fine. Um, so how would I be able to do that that would also uh, follow with a minimum distance 600, 6,000, 60,000, 600,000, 6 million, 60 million, 600 million. Yeah, okay. So that should now mean that it will follow the planet with a 600 million kilometer distance at all times. So basically we're, just, we're spying on them now. Um, and they don't really seem to give a crap even though they have seen the vessel. They probably don't know exactly what it's for, but they can probably assume that it's not for anything good. Um, so we're slowly going to build up intelligence points and that should hopefully reveal information to, war to us, um, which we can then hopefully use to some degree. Um, so if we have a look over on uh, the planet, if we have a look at uh, the King Bowden systems populations, um, we have 4.8 points built up there. So we're going to need quite a few more points if we are going to get what I want to get. Um, so I'm going to do a five day increment. I'm going to go bold, I'm going to go beautiful. We're going to do a five day increment. There we go. Yeah, they can't see us. Very, very good. Um, and we can kind of just keep the ship here and build up more and more intelligence on the planet. So slowly the planet is moving. And we have to be cognizant of that fact. Um, it's got a very slow orbit though. And because it has a very slow orbit, we're able to follow it. Because if we have a look at the planet in question, it is a 23,000 down planet with 30 billion. They could have a like, massive population. So we can estimate that population is probably about 12 billion. No, 9 billion. 9 billion. Something like that. 9 to 10 billion. On that one planet, which outnumbers our entire species, by the way. But because if we have a look at the planet itself, um, uh, if we have a look on the orbit, um, where is it? Or oh, the day, right? So a year. Uh, so the time it takes to get around the sun is 36.4 years, okay? So we're able to practically stay in line with it uh, consistently. Um, and we'll be able to build up intelligence on the enemy uh, relatively relatively easily. Um, so there we go. Uh, it does, we do need to move back into alignment to, gain, uh, to get closer, of course. But... We're going to be able to keep building up because how big it is, how big the population is, we're able to, to gain more and more information on the actual planet. Um, so we now have 23 points. North Umberland completed orders, so that is for stabilizing the jump point to Captain Star. So I'm going to stabilize that to EV Lacerte, and I'm also going to stabilize that to Bernard Star so that we can bring in reinforcements directly from Sol much easier. We now have 26 points, so my question is, what exactly can we use them for? Kingdom of Bautzen. 26 points. Uh, maximum intelligence. So we haven't, we, I don't, we haven't really gained anything from it, but I'm just hoping that this will, this will help. Uh, you are res, where are you? There you go. You need to have your maintenance thing shut off. There we go. Um, and we're just going to keep building them up. And this is what the Suffolk was designed for. It's able to stay at this far distance, but build up these, 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 uh, these points, these intelligence points to be able to spy on the enemy and to determine what kind of threat they do pose to us. Um, so far, the aliens haven't done any hostile actions towards our vessels. And if anything, we're the ones doing the hostile actions. But... We always do want to be sure and we want to know what we're going up against if we do need to fight them. Uh, 38 points. Um, I think when you eat 100, you get information about something. I'm not too sure. Neutral ship compact, 00 kilometers has changed. So yeah, we still are detecting those vessels over there. Um, and we gained information. And they have finally finished stabilizing the jump point. 
which now means that they are in beta pupus. And because they're in beta pupus, they are going to be closing in towards us. Um, yes, they are, which is going to be a little bit of a problem. Now, we have one of our scout vessels here. And I wonder, would that allow us to gain some reputation with them? Um, I see. You want us to leave? Uh, I will oblige your offer. <laughs> uh, for now, anyway. Um, we're going to head over to V61. Um, but yeah, we want to actually build up some reputation here, though. Uh, we have now finished... Um, yeah, we finished, what you call it, the design work on that. So now we can begin to retool the shipyard for our new supercarrier. Okay, so that seems to be some kind of survey vessel. The we conquistas are survey vessels. We've definitely confirmed that much. Um, the the partisan is definitely a, a stabilization vessel of some kind. Um, okay, well. New alien ship. See, these boys seem to be going undetected, which is really, really useful, I will admit. Um, Okay, new ship class has been detected, Hospitaller class. Not sure what purpose they serve, or any, if they do. Um, but do need to be cognizant that there is the Hospitaller class now. A real ship, a real thing that does exist. Um, but what I'm really interested in is just how our, 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 our intelligence gathering is going. Uh, because the more intelligence we do gain, the better. Um, but that may take us quite a long time. 51 points. Mm -hmm. 54 points. Uh, there we go. Ordnance Factory. Um, so yeah, if we go into uh, Beta Pupus now, they're going to start spreading out and colonizing that system, which is going to be a concern. Uh, Hospitaller class, maybe some kind of colony ship. Uh, the Baldwins and Daggers moved over to the Reconquista, which is interesting. Um, I'm not sure what kind of vessels they must be or, or are. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, to figure that out. We may need a diplomacy ship at some point. Um, it depends, though, if we do want to engage in a di diplomatic action or start to snuff these aliens out as soon as we can. Um, my goal right now is to stabilize up to V51 Signy and try and halt them at that point. If we can get a colony there, we can tell them to leave. And at that point, we can try and block them in. But the chances of us being able to do that are low with the rate at which they're beginning to colonize through here. Um, we now have 66 intelligence points, uh, which is fantastic. Complete shore leave. I'm going to wait till 100. If, if 100 doesn't get us anything, I'm going to have to look into how it all works. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep doing five-day increments here um, as we gain more and more intelligence points uh, about the enemy, um, which could obviously be extremely useful for us. Uh, our vault block four completed. Uh, standing orders. John uh, Capini needs new orders. Um, we're going home, uh, John. Uh, you are going home because we are not surveying any further until we have it correctly assessed and the situation is stabilized. Um, so 80 points, 83 points, 85 points, 88. 90, 93, 95, and then 98 should be next, 97, and then we should be getting 100. There we go, so that did give us information. Technical details has been acquired of Planetary Sensor 3. We estimate they have a population of 8.2 billion. 
and 24,586 installations. That's insane. Are you kidding me? There must be a lot, but it must be infrastructure or other things. Um, information data for Nasius. Uh, systems populations data, data for Nasius here. Um, not data for Nasius aliens. Kingdom of battles and aliens. Vega, 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 Vega. Um, so we estimate installations 8.2 billion, current intelligence points, maximum intelligence points. So will we gain more as we continue? Yes, we will. Okay, that's what I'm going to leave the episode off. Exciting. We have found the next challenge. And our Suffolk is actually doing the job it was intended to do. And we're going up against a enemy with nearly double our population. Um, and they are rapidly expanding towards us. Uh, they have already stabilized the jump point into Beta Pupus. And they could close in towards Sol at any point. I have tasked our vessels with stabilizing a jump point uh, to Captain Star. And if necessary, we will position forces in Captain Star to hold them back. I may even make star bases that can hold in Captain Star so that we do not allow the not this this race to continue to exert their influence. Evie Lacerte is also near the front lines and has just been recently colonized. We will need to send reinforcements and military forces to that area. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Please just like, comment, subscribe. It really does help me out. Bye-bye. And special thanks to members Alter Ego 1101, King Stroza, Lewis Neto, Impassive 9001, Grav Mania, Petit Juanito, and Fishik. Thanks for your support. We're able to keep the channel going. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.